Hello and welcome back in this very very awesome and very very special crazy video actually this is a custom crazy car indeed so I received uh, on the snapchat group by Mr. David uh, Mr. David Hamilton yeah Mr. David Hamilton he requested a very very crazy car with uh, a very very high RPM so the requested video used to be when when he started uh, requesting the video on the on the group he want he really wanted a, a, a high revving to like 12,000 RPM a V8 engine, a flat plane cr crankshaft for a V8 engine, and he kept going on and on about all of the specs, suspension, body, whatever, and then he changed his mind at the last minute, and he want a V6 engine. So I started making the engine, everything was smooth until I, re I until I found out that the engine isn't isn't gonna reach to a, it's, it's not gonna reach 12,000 RPM easily, or actually it will be impossible to reach 12,000 RPM with with the power peaking. Near, nearly 12,000 RPMs. Actually, the power is peaking is, is peaking much much less than 12,000. And then we changed all of the plans and we continue making this video with that engine. The engine is very good actually. It's not a bad engine. It's a very very high revving and a very very powerful engine, naturally aspirated, and which is surprising for a V6 engine uh, that is making this kind of power naturally aspirated. But we managed it, and the car is looking absolutely crazy and very very. Very cool, actually, as you will see later. So, before we start with all of the crazy specs that Mr. David uh, requested, let, I want to remind you that, please, if you enjoy the video, uh, remember to hit that like button. If you are new to the channel, get subscribed, share the video if you want to share it, and, of course, uh, hit, that, hit that notification bell button so you can get a notification each time I release a new video. Alright, so let's start uh, with the specs. As you can see, we have an aluminium panels for the body, that, that's what he requested. Monocoque chassis type, because, well, it's the best monocoque, it's the best chassis ever. And because this, this car here, I think you will find it very, very similar to a, a famous and legendary Japanese car. I'm not going to say the name of it, and, well, it's, it's your duty to know how as a car enthusiast, or which car I'm talking about. Uh, well, I think you already know. Tell me in the comment section what you think this body is. Uh, or which, which real car the, this body uses for that for that particular model that I'm talking about. All right, so let's move on. Monocoque chassis type because this body uh, is a mid-engined car. It, it's a mid-engined uh, mid-engined body, and as a mid-engined car, you cannot use ladder for this body in particular. So the only options are monocoque, space frame, and semi space frame. Well. Monocoque is the best. It's the lightest. It's the it's the it's the best. As I said, it's the best from all of these three chassis. So I went with it. Light, advanced, high strength steel. That's what he requested. And basically, that's if you are looking for not a very expensive uh, chassis material with with a very very lightweight, with a very lightweight, and of course uh, with a high stiffness, so it can cope with high cornering and good immense speed. It, this is the best option to go with for a stiff reliable good chassis mid transverse that's what he requested and basically and actually, actually it's the best option to go with because the engine uh, cannot be fitted longitudinal i mean you will have to be, you have to build a very very tiny engine to cope with mid longitudinal but mid transverse well you can put really really big engine in this car and it will fit in nicely without any problem without any problems yeah double wishbone in the front also there was a bit a bit of a bit of uh, discussion on the group, which is best, uh, the McPherson strut or double wishbone or push rod. Of course, push rod is the best, but push rods will take very, very long time, especially in the front, as you can see, 12.50. And well, go with, uh, if you want to go with push rod in the front, now that is another problem. With push rods on the front suspension, uh, the load capacity of the car will decrease really, really hard. And it will start to bottom out actually when you are using it in the front in this body specifically I don't know if, if this uh, problem occurs in your current version of the game If you have this game if you have automation game and if you have this body I want you please to go and try it if, if you can if you don't have any problem with it Choose this body and choose push shots on the front and see if, if it will bottoms out or not when you when you slam it to the ground That's a problem happening with me only when I choose push rods on the front with this body. I love this body so much and I like to use it in, in many cars but I only I, I, the only option that I need to, that I can go with is double wishbone. I mean the whole uh, the whole idea or actually the basic idea was to go with double wishbone only in the front but I wa I really wanted to upgrade it to push rods. I really want to make it with push rods but unfortunately it kept bottoming out and well 
with these white tires, no, it couldn't really cope good. So I went with double wishbone. Push rods on the rear because, well, it's the best option and it will work perfectly with this setup, with this engine uh, mounted in the middle, in the middle, and it's perfect. Plus 5 quality on the chassis and basically plus 5 quality on everything, that's what Mr. David requested, plus 5 quality on absolutely everything, except some minor stuff, I didn't put plus 5 quality on it because, well, it will make the car worse, not better. Moving on, as you can see, this is the engine in question, this is the beast that I made for this amazing looking car, also everything is on plus 5 quality. We have a V. A V-shaped, 60 degrees, 6-cylinder engine, aluminium silicon block material, and if you are wondering why aluminium silicon, because it's much lighter than aluminium, and well, because the production year it's, it's, it's 2020, aluminium silicon, it, it, it's, it's a better option and a better material to go with than, than regular aluminium, and as, as you can see, it will require less time to be engineered, but it will cost a little bit more, yeah. So, Aluminium silicon on the block, 98.8 mm on the bore, 87 mm on the stroke, which equals 4000 or, or 4002 cc engine or a 4 liter V6 engine. Dual overhead camshaft with 4 valves per cylinder. Well, be uh, because this is actually not a racing car, uh, this is semi uh, or it's like a street racer, or let's say it's half uh, a race car and half a uh, a street car or a sports car that, that you can drive every day on the street so going with five valves per cylinder well, it's a very good option for a track car a very 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 good track car because it will make more power it will the engine will sound much better but unfortunately the torque the low end torque will drop really really hard i mean the engine will only produce all of its torque and all of its power on high rpm and on low rpm it will be a rubbish engine so you're choosing four valves with, of course, variable valve lift, you will have uh, both of the worlds. You, ha you will have a very good engine on low RPM and a, and a very, very high performance uh, engine or engine, engine performance on, on high RPM. All right, so let's move on. We have aluminum silicon on the cylinder heads as well. Billet steel crankshaft, lightweight titanium connect or titanium connecting rods, whatever you want to call it, titanium, titanium. So you know what I mean. Lightweight forged connecting rods, sorry, lightweight forged pistons, not connecting rods, with plus 5 quality. We have 13.3 to 1 is the compression ratio, 18.85 on the cam profile and 100 on the VVL profile. Well, uh, if I know what you are, I know what you are thinking right now, you will tell me that 85 is it's not really far enough, far from 100, but and actually you are right, you are 100% correct. Uh, I can decrease it more, I can push a little bit more fuel in and I can decrease this one more to make the engine more economical, more smooth and to make more low-end torque. But unfortunately if I do that, the torque curve will split in half. It will be like very very high low-end torque here and it will drop and then it will rise again when the VVL profile will engage and that is a problem, really big problem for a high performance car you don't want to do that you want a very very small smooth, smooth curve so you can have a smooth powerful acceleration yes that's why I made it 85 I kept tuning it I mean uh, uh, it, even with 85 even with 85 it's it's not actually perfectly tuned because I it, if you want it, if you want the cam profile to be perfectly perfectly tuned it should be around 87 88 87 88 and as you can see with 88 or 87 it will it will actually lose more low end torque but it will get much much smoother but i don't want to do that because because it it will it will be much much less fuel efficient and it will just it will get rubbish in every single way and no, I don't want that. I want the engine to be efficient, as you can see, 20%, which is very, very awesome and very, very good for this kind of application. I don't want to talk too long, but let's continue. Variable vast timing in all cams. It's perfect for this setup, plus 5 quality. Naturally aspirated, of course. Direct fuel injection, individual throttle bodies, or a throttle per cylinder. So we have six individual throttles with, of course, performance intake manifold and super 98 octane fuel well actually mr david requested a 100 octane fuel but there's a problem uh, there's a problem by choosing 100 because if you want to sell this car if you want to use it on the street for every everyday using 100 is a very very 100 octane is a very very rare fuel 
you cannot just go to a, a regular petrol station and buy or fill up with 100 octane fuel. This is very, very rare and very, very unique actually. And it's very, very expensive. Uh, and I don't want that. I want to sell the car and I want, of course, to, uh, to, to, to I want people to use it. And 98 is actually available in a, in a lot of uh, European countries. You can find it in petrol stations and you can, you can fill, it up, fill it up normally. I think also in Australia it's very, very popular. Uh, and that's, that's good. I want to sell the car absolutely everywhere. And that, that's a good option to go with. That's why I went with 98 instead of 100. And actually, just extra two points of uh, octane, it won't actually make extra difference in power. I mean, yes, it, it will gain like 10, 15, maybe 20 horsepower more because this is not a, a turbocharged engine. This is a natural aspirated engine. So to add more power, I need to increase like ignition, uh, maybe a little bit more compression ratio. That's it. It will, it will not increase too much in power. So 98 is just perfect. 13.2 is the air fuel ratio. Uh, actually, Mr. David told me that if I want to push a lot of fuel in, 13.1 is my limit. So I went below the limit with a little bit, as you can see, not below the limit, or actually before the limit a little bit. So 13.2 instead of 13.1, which is perfect actually. It's not bad at all. The engine is uh, the engine is making 20.3% of fuel efficiency. It's really really good for a high performance V6 engine, pushed to its max. 78 on the ignition timing which is very advanced 9000 is the rpm that's what we actually settled on at, at the end of the requested video with plus 5 quality on the fuel system long tubular headers as you can see dual exhaust pipes bypass valves two and a half inch exhaust diameter with high flow three-way catalytic converter and quad reverse flow mufflers because we have twin exhaust pipes with plus 5 quality and this is the final result uh, 468.2 horsepower at 8,500, 331 pound-feet of torque at 6,300. That's very, very, very perfect. The engine is very reliable, actually very, very reliable. The engine is efficient. We are using all of the available octane. The emissions are very low, which is good. The engine actually, it's not noisy. Uh, it's actually, it's actually decent, decent sporty noise. Throttle response is extremely high, which is perfect for a high-performance car. 50 is the smoothness, which is surprising. Usually V6 engines are rubbish when it comes to, to smoothness, but with with 85 on the on the there on the cam profile and 100 on the VVL profile, that managed to to balance this engine perfectly. And with with the with the compression ratio and sorry, the compression ratio actually will not do any difference. Uh, but when it comes to uh, when it comes to smoothness, actually less less stroke. In automation game will give you a little bit more more smooth engine with more bore if you if you can try it and and see what I am see what I'm talking about so the bore and stroke of this engine actually managed to make this engine much much smoother which is perfect and the engine actually actually does it's a very lightweight engine made from aluminium silicon and the internals are made from titanium and lightweight forged and billet steel crankshaft which is extremely light and extremely stiff and extremely durable and all of this make a very very perfect engine. So let's fire this beast and see what's what. As you can see, the engine is very, very cool and very, very powerful. Actually, I, I'm really surprised by the power and the torque. Not well, not by much, but the power. Nearly 500 horsepower from a 4-liter V6 engine. Really, really impressive. 
and of course with the with, with plus five quality on everything production units and engineering time will increase a lot and uh, that's not my saying that's mr david hamilton requested video so he told me to put everything on plus five quality i'm gonna put it on plus five quality even if, if it will take years and years to produce the car but that's what he requested and that's what we hear that's what we that's, that's what i'm giving him all right so as you can see you saw the engine you heard the engine it's per it's perfect and as you can see the exhaust headers are tilted behind the engine and un under it actually because the engine is mounted uh, as a transverse engine and check out the exhaust pipe it's bended here to make that curve and that looks absolutely amazing all right so let's move on i've chosen this 1987 coupe or coupe body looks absolutely magnificent also with plus five quality on the body and the fixtures and Mr. David requested, of course, uh, not, not the silver shadow, which one? The brutal silver. That's what he requested, the brutal silver color, because it looks absolutely magnificent on this car. Really, really good. Moving on, the fixtures. So, I, he wants pop-up headlamps, and he will get pop-up headlamps, as you can see, with, of course, regular uh, with regular headlamps. So, if you, if you don't want to engage... It's actually not working like that. No, it will actually work... Like when when the head the, when the pop-up headlamps are closed and you want to flash your high beam lights, you you don't have to wait for the pop-up headlamps to to rise and then flash. No, these will flash instead. Of course, with the indicators and the fog lights, as you can see, it will make a perfect decent car with a front logo, front as you can see a uh, grill with a front lip, and these side this front side uh, ventilation or vents as you can see. And also Mr. David Hamilton requested a very 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 strange request which is make the wheel fenders extremely extremely wide to the max. I, 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 I have like a lot of exclam exclamation marks over my head, a lot of question marks, why did he want that? And I get why, because he wants an extremely wide tire so they can grip hard, which is not bad. Grip is your friend always. But this is just crazy really 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 crazy but actually it looks good especially on this body i mean from t from the top where is it like this from the top it actually looks decent it doesn't look really ugly actually it looks very very cool and very very decent it's not bad at all and i like that i like the shape of it so much it looks very cool uh, as you can see the side mirrors well no i i did not choose these these will come like all, already integrated with the body as you can see no i cannot choose them as you can see now they come integrated with the body itself we have these sharp door handles the side vents the fuel filler cap is here these sporty racing rims they look absolutely magnificent with of course the ventilations on the side the rear sides from the from the bumper we have this rear spoiler or rear wing and also he requested these round these round uh, tail lights that looks that looks very very similar to the to the legendary nissan skyline the R33 or I don't know R34. I think the R34 maybe R34. Yeah, he requested those. I think the R34. Yes, because no, the R35 is the new one. The R33 and the R34. Yeah, the these these beautiful looking round lights and they look absolutely magnificent actually. A big round light on the left with the indicator inside it and of course a smaller uh, tail light with the reverse light the reverse bulb or light integrated into it it looks absolutely magnificent with the license plate holder the rear logo and the, of course the keyhole if you want to put your key and open the trunk yes the trunk or the boot as someone would call it, it looks absolutely magnificent and also he wanted a quad tips quad tips for the exhaust and i'm seeing a problem here which is yes this one the rear, the rear uh, the, the rear grill because the engine is mounted in the middle here and actually cooling to cool the engine of course the radiator will be here on the front but of course if, to cool the engine itself and to provide cold air intake into it these vents will provide cold air coming from the sides and hot air will will exit from these side vents and these in this rear grill so they, this can provide more cooling for the engine and more cold air intakes for good performance the car looks absolutely magnificent. I hope that you agree with me. It looks very, very cool and very, very beautiful, especially from the front. And of course, these these quad these quad 
circular uh, circular actually tail lights i mean kudos they look absolutely magnificent all right enough chit chat let's move on uh mr david want transverse rear wheel drive sequential gearbox seven speeds because because seven speed made huge different and well this is the best uh, the best ratio you can go with with this with this much final drive which is 4.55 to 1 or 300.302.9 kilometers per hour 27 on the spacing gave let me show you gave the quickest 0 to 100 time which is 3.4 seconds with the least amount of wheel spin which is 2.9 percent and this much fuel mileage 19.2 which is I consider it absolutely magnificent 19 miles per gallon from this massive powerful sports car on this passive 4 liter v6 engine i consider it very very good actually 27 on this facing and he, mr david requested a geared limited slip differential well it's not bad geared limited slip differential it's a, it's a very very popular and very very good uh, differential if you want to use it even if you want to upgrade your current uh, limit, your current your current open differential to a, a, a limited slip go with a geared one because well it's the best and it, it's very reliable, it's very efficient, and it will work perfectly. Because Vicious, well, Vicious limited slip differential, it's a rubbish, a, a really, really bad limited slip differential because it uses like a special liquid that when, when this liquid heats up, it will lock the wheels into a similar speed so they can spin together. And why it's rubbish? Because this, this, kind, of, uh, this kind of liquid, it's not really efficient. It, it, will, it will overheat quickly and it will not provide an instant, uh, an instant, an instant limited slip differential feeling. Well, which means the locking, the feeling of the lock, the locking wheels into a, into, into a similar speed. And that's why it's really rubbish. It's really, and, and it's a cheap way actually. It's very, very cheap. Let me show you. It says here, the geared limited slip differential will cost eight hundred and one dollars. The vicious will cost half, half of it. 400 bucks which is extremely cheap the open differential will cost 267 the manual local 320 467 this is 800 400 and of course check out the electric limited set differential that's why when I when I chose it actually the customers or the yes the customer or the market value dropped significantly because it will cost two thousand one hundred and thirty seven dollars to be made Yes, that's different. 800, 2000. So geared is the best option to go with. Uh, plus five quality, as I mentioned on everything on the car. Radial tires, sport compound, not semi-slicks because I want to I want to use the car on the street and semi-slick tires. Well, they are not really reliable and they are very very expensive. As you can see, all these sport compound tires already costing six thousand dollars for a set. These cost $8,108 and $80, which is absolutely hideous. I mean, extra $2,120, $29, that's very, very expensive. So Sport is the best option to go with. Now, let me show you the tire width, because this is where, where the, bit, the crazy bit continue. As you can see, because of the extremely wide uh, flare, tire flares or wheel, wheel archers, the front I went with 315s because it's it's the best to go with and 365 because well it's it's the max and it will provide as much grip as possible. And with these kind of with these kind of tire width with 16 inch rims and six uh, 610 is a tire diameter and, and five on the rear offset with magnesium rims and a very very custom suspension setup that, that I'm gonna show you later. We went with 99.9% of sportiness. But no, this will not continue. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it, take it to 100. 99, it's not acceptable. I need 100. I will show you how. Plus five quality. Uh, we have carbon ceramics brakes in the front. Six pistons uh, is the front, uh, front brake options with 325 millimeters max. This is the maximum size that the rims can fit or can take behind it. The rear is carbon ceramic. Two pistons, 260 because. Mr. David told me that in the future maybe he will fit like a drag slicks to the car. I know, I know this is not an option available on the, in the game, but he is talking like in real life. If you have this car with this much uh, wheel archer, with this big, big, wide wheel archer, you can fit like you can fit drag slicks easily. And he want the rear brakes to be 
as small as possible and to be efficient as possible. So with 260mm and 59 on the pad type, you can have absolutely zero, zero fading with, a, with an excellent stopping distance, absolutely excellent. And 50-50 as you can see, brake distribution, front and rear. And if you are wondering why it's zero quality, because with more quality actually you will not gain any, you will not gain anything. The stopping distance will, will be the same, uh, the customers will actually hate it so much, but it will actually, it will, and, and it will cost more, but it will be much lighter, more reliable, more comfortable, more sporty, but you are sacrificing so much for an extra a point or two. Which is not which is not efficient at all moving on we have semi clad under tray which is simple and the market value one or the market the market are demanding semi clad instead of fully clad no active rear wing no cooling flaps nothing 50 on the front lip 53 on the rear uh, on the rear wing which made ah, here we go here we go actually uh, we, they want more all right, so 56 actually, 56 that that increased it to 80.9 and 95 on the market. All right, 56, and we have 52 on the engine cooling, 100 on the brake cooling with plus five quality of the aerodynamics. We have two seats, sport interior because well, it's it's similar to to premium, but it's it's much lighter. It's made from aluminium, Alcantara, and uh, much much lighter materials. Premium entertainment, that's what we wanted, Mr. David zero quality on the interior because more quality will make it much heavier and I don't, and I, I don't want a heavy car. Variable hydraulic. Now, there was a discussion on the channel or group on the Snapchat, which is best for, for, a, for a, a true performance uh, coupe or a car. Choosing elect electric variable, well, it's, it's, a best, it's the best option if you want to have a very, a very light steering a very precise steering that that that, that 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 will move precisely on a single millimeter of steering movement if you want that go with electric variable but if you want to feel the road if you want to feel the bumps if you want to feel what are the what what the front tires are doing electric it, it's not your friend because you will not feel absolutely anything variable hydraulic it's the best option to go with if you want a true feeling of the road because uh, instead of choosing regular hydraulic, which will be continuously working, yeah, the, the steering wheel will be, will be always light like water, really, really, really extremely light on all kind of speed, on low speed and on high speed, which is not really safe. Choosing variable hydraulic, which means if you are driving the car slowly, the, the hydraulic system will engage and you will have a very light steering to park the car, to move the car slowly, to drive it normally, you need a good light steering so you don't so you don't sweat and do an exercise each time you drive it but when you are driving it really hard and when you are pushing a lot of high speed uh, into into the tires the hydraulic system will disengage and it will be it will be like it will be like there is no no power steering at all the, the steering will get much heavier and more precise and you can still feel the road which is very 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 uh, appropriate for the, this setup Electric, uh, electronic stability control plus lunch, plus lunch control. Well, I know the engine is making only 460 something horsepower, but lunch control it's still a good option if you want to launch it perfectly. Although it's rubbish, actually, I think we should go without it because the car has extremely, extremely wide tires and it will grip, grip immediately. But the customers want that plus five quality because actually going with more, as you can see, with more. Uh, with more quality the customers will actually hate it so i'm gonna keep it only on plus one quality standard tens that's what that was what mr david requested for a safety equipment zero quality also because more more uh, quality it will make the car much heavier and it, 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 it will start actually to be a volvo and i don't want to make a volvo performance car no uh, so zero quality is the best option to go with Moving on, we have standard springs because that's what the customers demanded. Adapt adaptive dampers that what what Mr. David requested and semi-active because that's what the that's what the market uh, wanted and of course that made semi-active sway bars made the car to perform much much better. We have a very very custom suspension setup, but we, before we start cracking with it, I want to adjust something here to make it 100. But which one? Which one will give me the edge? All 
All right, if I, if I want to make it 100% here, I want to sac I sacrifice, but no, I don't want to sacrifice any, any kind of sportiness value, even here. No, I don't want to sacrifice that either. You need to be patient when you are when you are tuning a suspension, when you are tuning suspension setup. You need to be patient with with absolutely everything, so you can achieve your your perfect. All right, now that's rubbish. Why would they want to do that to me? patient because well suddenly everything will change and as you can see the, the game actually changed it, its mind so we used to be 95 right now we are not really close to 95 and the sportiness value dropped significantly and so, suddenly the, suddenly the game will change its mind as you can see increasing decreasing we need to keep playing with all of the settings so you can make it perfectly set it up. Uh, sometimes you just touch something and you just ruin the hell out of it. Alright, so we, we are back to 80.9. Used to be alright, so the dampers are making all of the all of the fuss. Hmm. I don't want to make the car really uncomfortable as well. I want I want to make it comfortable as well. Alright, so let's get back to the tires. Maybe the tires are the answer. Alright, so so decreasing the the offset actually made it more drivable, more sporty actually. Mm, what should we do? What should we do? No tire width is perfect. All right. Hmm. No, I don't want to kill. I don't want to kill Sportsman's Valley and I want 100, sorry, sorry for wasting your time, if you want you can skip the video a little bit because I'm gonna try really hard to make this 100, I really want to go with 100, I genuinely want to go with, alright so, so the market demanded a little bit higher, a little bit higher right height, alright. Alright, so I think I'm gonna sacrifice a little bit of... Alright. Alright, so I'm gonna sacrifice a little bit of sportiness value, as you can see, to reach 100% of sportiness. Because 100%, why, why, do, why are you thinking that I'm, that I'm so into making the sportiness here 100%? Because I want to tune the suspension perfectly, 100% on the sportiness. Main, means that your, your, as you can see, the steering, the steering, and the suspension and the chassis are working together to make your car absolutely perfect for cornering. You, you are cornering so good, so flat, no problem. The car will be much, so much fun to drive by reaching 100% on the sportiness. And if you are building a truly, truly good, enjoyable, uh, enjoyable driving car, like a regular family car that uh, that it's really comfortable really supporting really good on on the road and, and and also on cornering in cornering you need to focus your 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 all of your tuning on drivability if you are making a regular car make sure to make the drivability 100% if you are building a, a true high performance car you need to you need to go with 100% on the sportiness so it's perfect like this sorry for wasting your time we are back on the track so as you can see, this is the final result, the, or the test track result. The top speed is 296 km per hour. Well, it's not plenty, I know that, but remember the car is making only 460-ish something horsepower. And yeah, with that much power, this is what you will expect with that much uh, of, of a differential ratio and of course the spacing. This is as, as, get, as best as it will get. Uh, as you can see, with we have 0 to 100 time in 3.4 seconds, which is really, really quick. It's not bad, actually. Quarter mile in 11.35, also quick. The car is cornering near, nearly flat, 3.8 degrees. It's not really a lot. 
no brake failing, stopping distance is perfect. And actually, uh, the, car, the car load capacity is uh, 258, 257 and a half. That's, that's good actually. Put two people in it, a little, a little light cargo, and job done. You can and you can tell 1.163 uh, kilograms, which is which is good actually. It, I know this is not a towing machine, but it's it's a good thing to know that you can. Uh, power to weight ratio it's actually good because the weight the car weighs only 1,291.9 kilograms, which is light actually. It's not heavy at all. The engine is light, the chassis is light, the body is light. It's good. And the weight distribution is 43% to the front, 57% to the rear. But with these white tires, with these wire, rear white tires and a little bit thinner front tires and the engine mounted on the, in the, on the rear or in the middle, it will actually balance out. It will be, it will be really, really perfect to drive as you saw because the, because, where is it? Because the sportiness, uh, the sportiness value is 100%. That means the car is balanced perfectly. The car, the car corners really hard without any problem and it's extremely fun to drive. All right, so let's move on. Uh, the market, the car with 10% margin, it will cost you 47,158 dollars. The car is very drivable. It's very, 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 very sporty. 80.4 80 points and 14 on the comfort uh, on the comfort value. Well, it's not really a comfortable car, but 14 point. It's it's a really good car. So the car has good stereo or good radio, good speakers. Uh, the car is very safe, as you can see, 45 points. It's prestigious to drive and it's very very reliable 79.2 points on reliability the car is extremely reliable which is very good and the environmental resistance the car will not rust I mean 60.3 points that is extremely good the car is well a little bit practical 22 points it's not it's not bad utility points well you have a big you have a big empty uh, you have a big empty boot or trunk front and rear you have two trunks which is which is good for utilization if you want to put stuff in it and the car can do 19.1 miles per gallon which is as i mentioned very good the emissions are very low everything is perfect service cost well yes it's, it's an expensive car because well you have a very very high performance engine and uh, well maintaining a, a mid-engine car it's not cheap at all because the cooling the cooling system will be unique the ignition system will be much unique the exhaust system is very unique the gearbox itself it's it's extremely unique because it's sending the car the engine is mounted in the middle, and the gearbox shape the gearbox shape it will be really really unique because the engine is mounted in the middle and it will send the power to the rear wheels, and that is a unique gearbox, and maintaining the the gearbox itself the engine and of course the the, the labor cost will be really 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 horrendous, so yeah, you need to keep an eye for that. But all of this power. Uh, weight distribution, perfection, everything for only 40, 47 grand, which is it's not bad. And that is my final problem with the car. As I mentioned to Mr. David Hamilton, putting everything on plus 5 quality will make the engineering time and the production unit extremely, extremely high, which will make the car, which will make, uh, which will make any, any manufacturer to take years and years to produce this car. He told me, don't worry about it. Well, I, I, I don't actually care because the car is absolutely perfect and I really like it. I really hope that you like it, guys. But now let's go to the test track and see what that, that, what kind of changes, all of the changes we made, if, if, if they will affect the time or not. Because I already ran the, the car and made 114.84. Let's see if this will change or not. <laughs>
so the car actually made a very very good time which is 14.94 a little bit slower than it used to be but it's still 114 114.94 which is really really quick i mean supercar territory really really top gear enthusiast will tell me what kind of cars that we have beaten with this amazing 460 what is, how much is it 468 horsepower v6 um, I don't know, is this a supercar? Do you think this is a supercar? I don't know, I think it's a supercar because we have the power, we have the looks, we have uh, the lightweight uh, the, light, the, the lightweight feeling, we have the, the perfect suspension, but we definitely, we have a single thing that we don't have, which is a very very expensive price tag, 47 grand only. I know that supercars usually cost hundreds and hundreds of thousands of thousands of dollars, but this one only costs less than 50 grand and some of you will tell me that car manufacturers uh, that will they will use like 40 percent margin 50 percent i know i truly know that but since i'm making this car here and 10 percent seems seems very 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 fair enough i'm gonna go with it and even with let's see even with 50 percent uh, margin Right, even with 53% margin, it will still cost only $64,000. That which is which is cheap, really, really cheap. 64, 63,000, yeah, maybe also say $70,000. $70,000, it's not expensive, because usually supercars they cost hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. We have all, we have, we have everything. We have push rod suspension on the rear, carbon ceramic brakes. We have the power. We have the torque, we have the perfect suspension, we have a lightweight chassis, very very lightweight chassis, a very very high performance engine made with the best materials ever, we have a sporty interior, we have premium entertainment system, we have downforce, we have everything, we have acceleration, we have uh, very very sticky tires, the perfect com and we have the looks, look at the car, looks very very beautiful. Alright, so let's go to the other, to the automation test track and see what's what. So we made a very very good time actually 2 minutes 0 0.4 uh, 2 minutes 04.85 which is very very quick actually uh, because I always as I always say any car that can go below 2 minutes on this big big wide track it's a very 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 fast car and 204 is actually very very close to below 2 minutes I mean only 4 seconds difference and I consider it very very quickly a very very quick car indeed and it corners really hard and it accelerates really really hard and it achieves this car achieves very very high G 
around corners, which is very, very awesome. So tell me what you think about this car, this crazy car, because I consider it a crazy car, and I, and I named it actually Custom Crazy Request, requested 4 liter V6, 9k RPM, street racer. It's a very, very amazing car, so tell me what you think about it in, in the comment section below. Do you think Mr. David has requested a very perfect car, or a very rubbish car, or a very weird car or crazy car oh i want to hear all of your thoughts in on the comment section in the comment section below and on the snapchat group tell me what you think guys uh, on the snapchat group and if you want if you want to if you want to be added on the snapchat group to request videos or to chat with all of the channel fans and to discuss anything in automation game or even in, in regular cars, sports car, anything, anything related to cars, uh, just add my uh, Snapchat, which is, which is Lord B A S ninety four, Lord Bass ninety four, so I can add you on the group, so you can chat, share videos, share vid share photos, request a car, request an engine, whatever, and uh, so you can keep, so you can keep yourself updated on everything we do on the channel here. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. I hope that you really, li really like the video. And remember, please, if you enjoy the video, hit that like button, get subscribed, share the video. You know the drill. You know, you know, you know everything that you need to do. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. My throat is starting to hurt. <laughs> and goodbye for now. And have an amazing evening, day, night, whatever the time you're watching. Goodbye.